what's up John Sanmez from simpleprogrammer.com so I got some some blowback as I often do from a video that I made about Obamacare and saying how it, it's not very good for the middle class and I think I laid out some pretty good arguments I said some things in there that some people did not like they didn't like the fact that I said that poor people are not economically smart they, that's that's interesting because to me that that seems pretty obvious that you must have some kind of economic deficiency in your thinking if you're not making money right I mean it's 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 like saying that I don't know fat people in some way eat too much <laughs> oh, oh gosh oh how could you say something like that? that that can't be true John that can't be that can't be true how, how could that be that 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 someone who's who's fat that doesn't mean that they eat too much just because they're fat they could have big bones or or slow metabolism well you can't get fat if you don't eat too much I'm sorry that's just that's it's just thermodynamics laws of physics and uh, you know if you if you don't have money there's probably a reason for that too I'm not saying that there's never any kind of exception to these things but as a general rule these things are pretty much true you can't really argue with this kind of stuff unless you just kind of one of those people that got to make excuses for yourself and try to make yourself feel better in your own inadequacies in life by trying to get other people off the hook which is it's it's a natural human behavior I, I'm not I'm not you know trying to knock you I mean we all do that but you might want to self introspect a little bit think about that think about why you have problems with some of these statements you know that that are pretty obviously true like you, you really can't argue the, the logic behind these things but that's not what I'm gonna talk about today what I want to talk about today is you know kind of relate to that video some people made the statements and they said yeah I mean there were, there were both sides of it and there was some good some good discussion there but but, but I had mentioned in that video about how I believe and, and, and it's kind of weird I've kind of got a weird view on this because I, I, again I don't belong to parties or ideologies I, I have my own thoughts right think for yourself okay That's, this is what I'm trying to encourage you to do don't just like toe the line for some political party or some you know conservative or liberal who cares what is logical what makes sense okay so I said that one on one hand I said I believe that we're eventually going to reach a point in human history where basic universal health care where it becomes a, a basic human right in fact I, I think I said in there and I do believe this that food will eventually become a basic human right right now water is right I mean pretty much everywhere in the world people are entitled to water not everywhere in the world but most civilized countries in the world right you, you have the right to water like you to drink like to be deprived of water is is unheard of food is not necessarily the case obviously and medical care is sort of almost the case but not quite and and I and I do believe that we're going to get there where it will become a basic human right is access to health care now some of it's kind of funny because some of the more conservative of you which you, you feel like I'm a traitor you feel like oh I thought I thought John was was this big Trump supporter conservative guy and how could he say that is he, is he talking about welfare pro you, you talking about breaking the backs of the working man and forcing them to provide health care to, to people are you talking about if I'm a doctor I have to be legally mandated to provide to medical care out of my own labor to someone else against my will or or face jail time I get that <clears throat> and I'm not suggesting that okay and then some some people actually on the on the other side because in that same video I said that that I think Obamacare is is a, a, a tax on on the middle class it hurts the middle class it doesn't really hurt the upper class as much and that I was against the subsidization subsidization <laughs> of healthcare 
for the poor people. And some of you said, oh, you, those poor, poor people. I don't mind helping the poor people. I don't mind paying a little bit more for my health insurance in order to help the poor people. And John, you're an asshole because you got yours and you don't care about the poor people. <laughs> I, I've done a video, I've talked about this before. I donate about forty about fifty thousand dollars to orphans in India every year. I care about the poor people. I don't care about giving people stuff when they can get stuff on their own. I I, I create these videos, I create this channel, I do what I do in order to help inspire people to rise to new levels, to be able to help and support themselves. So it's not about that. Okay, I, and here's the other thing. I, I, I would make this statement about this, and I mean, I'll get to my real point in a second here, but I would say this. I owe you nothing, but I give you everything. That's how I live. That's how I think that more people should live. I, I'm not obligated to give you anything. I don't care if you're poor. I don't care what you think. I, I owe you nothing. I owe you none of my labor. I owe you none of my money. But I, but I will give you everything that I, that I have, you know, everything that I can because I care, not because I owe. And that's that's the fundamental difference, I think, in this in this thinking is that, you know, and a lot of people like to bash rich people and say, ah, you know, whatever. And the thing is, like, <laughs> I don't want to be mandated to have to give. I'll decide. I'll, I'll do it because I want to, right? I, I own what I created from my hands. No one has a right to that. that that's what I stand for. That's what, I, what I'm saying here is that. So let's, let's, let's kind of take all this. And I've, I've probably succeeded now in pissing off all of my audience because if you're a super conservative, I've pissed you off in some point, you know, some degree. If you're super liberal, I've probably pissed you off. But guess what? Do I give a fuck? No, I don't give a fuck. You know why? Because I'm going to say and I'm going to do what I'm going to do because it makes me happy. I love you. I want to help you, but I'm going to I'm going to tell it how it is regardless of you unsubscribe or whatever you leave nasty comments. It doesn't really matter that much, okay? Because that that would that would taint what I'm saying. It would, it, I would lose my purpose if I cared about that. And some of you need to stop caring so much about, about what other people think. So let's talk about this. So, so what, what, what am I proposing then? What am I saying is going to happen as far as how could we have a basic human right of u universal health care? How could we have a basic human right where people have access to medical care? And that's, that's a human right. Like everyone deserves to have that. And yet, how can we have that not come from the, the back of the working man? How can we not obligate people? Remember I said, I, I, I owe you nothing, but I give you everything. How can, we, how can we actually have that happen? How can we have it so that we've got on one hand, people have this human right for basic health care or let's say food, right? These basic things or some people say basic income, you know, which I can argue both ways. But let's, let's say, let's just go with the health care, okay? How can we have that? And how can we have the working man not be obligated to provide this for the non-working man, for let's say, or for, for the, the common citizen, the common good of society? How can we have those two things? Well, this is technology, my friends, and this is what I'm talking about, about what I, I mentioned in the comments, I believe. I mentioned about the, when, the, when the tide rises high enough, everybody benefits. And, and there's the key to this is that it's not a zero sum game, right? If, if you've, if you've been successful in life, you have figured out that life is not a zero sum game unless you're trading in the stock market, that when you create value, it comes from abundance that it doesn't take away from someone else. Everyone can become wealthy. Everyone can become wealthy. It's, it's not a zero sum game. Okay. And so, Part of the things that, and, there, and there's a lot of reasons for this, and one of the, the, the biggest reasons for this is, is this kind of principle that, that is rooted in technology. And I don't just mean computer like technology 
like you think, but the root, the real meaning of the word technology, which is, is a tool that, it, that enables something, that, that unlocks something, right? At least that's my definition for it. And so as, to, as we've technologically advanced, right, things have changed. We, we've, the, the, the level has risen for everyone without extra effort. And so there's some ways that this has happened before, and I'm going to get some ways, going to tell you what's going to happen in the, in the healthcare and the medical industry that is going to change things drastically. So historically, right, you know, human civilization has gone through different periods from, from agrarian to industrial to technological or, you know, where we're at now or beyond that, you know, postmodern era. There, there's some different, depending on who, what kind of sociologists or anthropologists you talk to and what, what, how they would define it. But it's pretty clear that we hit some certain technological milestones. One of them being that we got the ability to greatly increase crop yields, right? So I, I believe, now don't quote me on the statistic, but you can look it up. But in a lot of places, we have figured out how to make a lot of crops like wheat, for, for, for an instance, yield about 100 times what they used to yield, right? Some of this is from cross-pollination and, and hybridization and, and, you know, that scary GMO word. Things like that have, have helped us to increase the yield, and especially the yield per, per square foot and, and per plant. And so when, that, when something like that happens, when that technology becomes widely available, Right now, there, now, technology goes through a phase where someone owns it, but then it becomes so ubiquitous and it becomes so commoditized that it's, it's so cheap it's basically free. When that happens, when, when suddenly, you know, as a, as a human species, you figure out how to increase crop yield by 100, 100 fold, everyone benefits. The, the, the level of what was poverty sort of rises, right? And, and, and right now, I mean, if you look at it in the, in the U.S. at least, what people consider below the poverty line, I... I Okay, I get that it's not the most comfortable place to live, and if you're if you're comparing yourself to the Joneses, yeah, it looks like you are are very poor. But if you're comparing yourself to the rest of the freaking world, you are wealthy. You're sitting there with your iPhone collecting your welfare check, and you're like, oh, I I'm poor. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, relatively speaking to your fellow Americans. Okay, fine, but to compare to the rest of the world, compared to what the world was like three, four hundred, five hundred, a thousand years ago, you're you've got it's amazing the stuff that you have, right? So, what I'm saying though is the reason why that we've risen to that level is because of technological advances of, of various kinds. Now, the agricultural revolution was one kind. We also have, I mean, just the information age, right? Just, just, just the fact that, I mean, computing itself has become cheaper and cheaper, and it required some investment from some people to to get to that, right? It didn't magically happen, right? A lot of money, a lot of capitalists invested. Certain companies like Intel and other computer companies that made microprocessing, made chips cheaper and faster and computing and disk storage and all of these things. And at, at first, the people who invented that technology benefited from that in, in, a, in a large proportion, but then it became so ubiquitous that everyone benefited. Everyone got this. It, we, it sort of, it rose all the boats again. It, the, the tide rose in, in that aspect so, such that even someone of, of meager means can have a device in their hand and they can ask it just about any question and Google will answer them. It's amazing, right? We have a, a library, like a library, like ancient people have never even considered so much information at the at our fingertips, right? This has risen the boats for everyone, the, risen the tide for everyone. Everyone's level is so much better, right? Now, there's there's tons of examples of this. If you, if you think about this, how we're, we're progressing as, I mean, the even, even just from the, the water sources that are cleaner, the, the food sources, all, all of these things, and, and they basically come to this point where they eventually end up becoming essentially free or so cheap that everyone benefits from it and doesn't cost anyone anything at that point, right? There's investment, right? The first person who figured out how to, how to, to, to go from hunter-gatherer to, to planting crops, 
they, they made more of an investment, okay? But once that knowledge was widespread and figured out, everyone benefited from that and it didn't cost that first guy anything more, okay? The same thing with with increasing the the, the output of crops, the same thing with inventing microchips and increasing the, the processing power over time of, of this technology, with Google on our phones, with all of this stuff, there was an initial cost, but to, to sustain that level, it's not, it's not costing anything from the working man it, you know it, it's, it's very minimal in, in the cost right so so the, the boat has actually risen the, the level has risen the, the playing field has risen now now we'll get to the, finally to what I'm talking about what's the point how could this happen in healthcare well my prediction in fact I'm sure that this is the case is in the future we we are going to hit a technological technological breakpoint where we have smart enough systems or you have smart enough AI if you will where medical diagnoses will be programmatic will that we'll have the technology and computing power to automatically diagnose medical conditions that it will not require a physician a general practitioner in order to make diagnoses right that we'll be able to we'll be able to do it from our homes we'll, the, the, the technology will be so cheap and so efficient that it'll virtually be free and so we will be able to eliminate a huge amount of the healthcare costs of, of going to the doctor to see what's wrong with you or to have blood tests done because you'll be able to do it in your home you'll be able to prick your finger or you won't even have to prick your finger because you'll just put something on your finger or you'll have a chip that's in you automatically that's monitoring levels and reporting data and we'll we'll have that like all this knowledge and information that we're getting and as we're advancing AI we're eventually going to hit this point where it's going to raise the level where at least to that level that, that that's that's going to happen not only that but in the medical field right right now in surgery we have a lot of robotic assisted surgeries okay and procedures some procedures are done completely in an automated robotic fashion where someone sets it up and and the surgery happens by a robot this is some crazy shit but that's going to continue to advance right so it's it's really not that far out to imagine that someday we're going to reach the point where we have enough robotics and automation in the medical industry that this basic level of of medical care is going to be is is going to essentially be free to to everyone and it's not going to cost someone else to produce that okay that's that's what, that's what I'm talking about and and we we can't artificially get there because and, and this is this is the thing that I'm saying is and this is why I'm saying that I believe that this will eventually become a basic human right but I'm not for subsidize I'm not for taking the money out of the working man's pocket right now to to pay for it now because it's not there yet we will get there technologically and we're getting there and we're getting closer but we have to wait till we get to that point now at the same time we can't fight it when we get to that point right we, we there's no reason why I should hold you back from getting the benefits of some ubiquitous technology just because you haven't worked for it because we all benefit from that thing right that's 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 the thing and, and some people have tried to halt innovation and halt technology and tried to own these big ideas and that's that's what I'm against I mean I think that we we need to have some period of time where it's worth innovating where it's worth developing that's why we sort of have a patent system that sort of works in the in the United States where it, it makes sense because I'm going to invest a lot of time I'm going to invest a lot of money to invent a new technology I should be able to benefit from that for, for enough time to make enough money to make it worth it otherwise I'm not going to invest the time if, if as soon as I create something I have to give it away right but eventually and that's why the patent system exists eventually that technology the patent expires Technology does have to be given away, and it does improve mankind in general. And that, and that's the the principle of the idea behind it. I realize that the patent system is broken, but it's not just through the patent system, right? It, it's just through these these technological advances that just benefit everyone. And if you look at your life, and you look at so many of the things that you get for free, you get a lot of shit for free, 
right? Or so low cost that it's basically free. And those all came from technological advances, whether it be in, in the computer realm or just, you know, or just the ability to sit on a toilet and wipe your ass without having to go outside <laughs> to an outhouse, indoor plumbing, right? This has become ubiquitous, at least in, in, in the U.S. and in many civilized nations. So there you have it. That's how healthcare will eventually become a basic human right. That's how food will eventually become a basic human right. And as we, we, we raise that, that level, but we can't artificially cause this to happen. We, if, if we do that, what we do is we're, we're, we're stifling people. I, I'm against that. Again, when we artificially try to make this happen, we're, we're, we're shifting from this idea, like I said, of, of the principle that, that I tend to live by, which is I owe you nothing, but I give you everything. And we shift from that to I owe you. I owe everyone. I owe society. I am a slave. I am a debt to society. I, I, my labor is not my own. It belongs to the good of mankind. And when we get to that place, that's where we lose innovation. That's where we lose motivation. That's where we halt the technological advances that are going to rise the, the, the tide for everyone. See, and that's, that's the key is that's why that is so bad. And if you look at places in the world where we've done that, you look at or where they've experimented with that, one, one, the, the biggest one that comes to mind is the, the former Soviet Union. But it said, okay, your labor doesn't belong to you, it belongs to all of us, right? How, how, how much of that, how, how much of that destroy an economy, how much of that halt innovation, technological, one of the reasons why the United States has been so innovative and has, has produced so much of the technology, and some of you don't like this, but it's true, so much of the technology that the world is utilizing today is because of this 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 idea that what you create this kind of capitalist notion right that what you create belongs to you and you choose to share that and that that creates that innovation that's what what keeps that that tide rising and so if we try to inf inflate that we try to artificially do that it it, it, it stifles the entire process but we will get there and and that's and that's why I am a, a proponent of eventually having that universal health care but we have to do it in, in such a way. We need to accelerate the pace at, at which we invest in the technology. We need to make sure that people are taken care of at, at, a, at a very basic level, but we're not quite at the place yet where I think we're, we're, we're the, we're, where we can have what some people want and it doesn't cost anyone anything. But we will get there. Just like we've gotten there with a lot of technologies, with a lot of things, we just have to be patient and we have to keep on investing in the system, not taking out of the system, right? It, it's it's, it's the, the, the feed a man a fish versus teach him to fish. If you invest in preventing, if you invest in the wrong thing and in, in sort of redistributing the wealth and, and forcing someone to work without getting the benefits of their, their effort or, or to greatly diminishing their effort, they're going to work less and they're going to innovate less and it's going to slow down the whole thing and and we're, we're, we're dangerously close to that that place I think and as I think that we'll see a massive upheaval in the next few years that will reverse this trend as as always things go from pendulum motion there you have it I I, I hope that I have pissed off enough people if you don't like this video that's tough. Sorry, Charlie. But if you do, if you want more videos, you just want to harass me and, and see what kind of goofy shit I'm going to say, click that subscribe button below and uh, you can get all my long ass videos about my rants on what I believe. <laughs> all right. I'll talk to you next time. Uh, take care.